So running season is definitely here. If you're new to running, this routine is gonna help you with injury prevention. If you're more of a seasoned runner planning your next marathon or 10K perhaps, you wanna improve your running efficiency and your stride, your technique, this routine's for you. So we're about to take you through a proper dynamic warm up for running. Now it's important for injury prevention and to increase your running efficiency. First one, we call it an A skip. So it's basically opposite arm, opposite leg, keep your posture tall, drive your knee up pretty much as high as you can without leaning forward. Second component is a paw back. So this is the B phase. So basically what you're doing is you're going to extend your leg and pull back. So what that's doing, it's engaging your hip flexors initially, but then your hamstrings as you pull back against the concrete. All right, next one is the C. So this is the finish. Heel goes towards the butt, right? So you're gonna go from here, pump your arms to set your cadence, drive your heels up, stay nice and tall, and it's about frequency. You wanna get as many reps as you can within that 20 meters. All right, from there we have one more called a stride out. Now what this is gonna do, it's gonna get your calves and Achilles active. You're basically bounding here. So it's up on the ball of your feet, going for as much distance as you can cover. So at this point, your muscles should be warmed up, your circulation should be going through your muscles. Now you wanna go through a couple of stretches that are dynamic. So first one, standard lunge stretch, step forward, Opposite hand backwards, lean back slightly. You're gonna feel that stretch through the front of your hip, the hip flexor. So I'd say about eight to 10 steps per leg. Hold for a couple of seconds, put pressure through your front heel always. Next one is a straight leg kick for stretching the hamstrings, the back of the leg. So it's up, opposite arm, opposite leg. You can get progressively higher as you feel like you're loosening up. Okay, so a lot of runners leave out strength work, but it's very important to alleviate discomfort, to alleviate injury, and to improve your running efficiency. So we're gonna go through a little strength routine. The first exercise is called a hip abduction. All you need is a post, a fence, a tree, something that you can lean against. You're gonna stand about two to two and a half feet away from that. And then you're, what you're doing is you're gonna keep your body in a very straight line, right? Core tight, and you're gonna exhale, drive your leg up as high as you can with your heel leading. Right, so you point your toe down to the ground, let your heel lead the motion, and you wanna get about 20 to 25 reps of that, and then you repeat the same thing on the opposite side. Now it's important not to lead with your hip, then you take the emphasis off of the uh, muscle that we're working, which is your glute medius. Now the importance of working this muscle, it's a muscle that is often weak in a lot of runners. It's gonna help stabilize your hips, stabilize your knees, and it'll prevent further injury uh, from below the waist, basically. All right, so as a runner, it's very important to strengthen your core, your abdominal wall. That's gonna improve your posture when you run. It's actually gonna help your running stride and your efficiency. So we're gonna go into an exercise called the plank. So the first one is just the standard hand plank. You're gonna go hands directly below the chest. So that's a very important point. Shoulder, elbow, and wrist, right? So chest directly above. You're holding that position. Draw your belly button tight to the spine. 30 seconds to a minute or a minute and a half. If that's too easy for you, we're gonna vary it up a little bit. So what you do now is you move your feet closer together and you're gonna elevate one leg. So you're alternating sides. So what we're doing now is we're destabilizing your hips, causing you to contract your abdominal wall further. Now if that's easy for you, you're gonna spread the legs a little bit further, a little further than shoulder width. Now we're gonna do a plank walkout. So this is level three. One, two, three, four in terms of hand movements, and then back in. One, two, three, four. So you'd repeat that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now for repetitions, there and back equals one. You try to do 10 to 12 repetitions of that. Uh, for the leg raises, you'd wanna do about 20 reps per side. All right, that's gonna help you keep your posture, your core strong, and prevent injury and improve your running stride. So to improve your running mechanics, it's important to strength train your posterior chain of muscles. So that's basically all the muscles along the back of the leg, the hips, and your back and shoulders, all right? This is a great exercise to do it, doesn't require any equipment, it's called the tripod. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your feet about shoulder width apart. You're going to bend down, hands on the ground, right? And all in one motion, you want to come up, push off that leg, extend your right leg, and you want to go parallel to the ground, lifting everything up so all your back extensors are firing, your legs are firing, your glutes, your hamstrings, everything. All right, so you repeat that for reps. So again, it's down and extend. About a second hold and repeat. Down and extend. Great for balance as well. You wanna do 10 to 12 reps on one side and then of course repeat it on the opposite side. So another very important muscle to stretch out after running, particularly if you've run for long durations or have gone up hills, is your calf muscle. So here's a great stretch to do after your workout. You're gonna have your hands against a post or a fence. 
You want to plant that, the one you're stretching, you want to plant it behind you. Get your heel right to the ground. You're going to stabilize yourself against the post and push against it as you force your heel to the ground. So now I'm feeling the back of my leg right in the upper calf area below the knee joint. Hold that for about 30 seconds to 45 seconds. And now very important, the second part you want to stretch is the soleus. So you're going to keep your same position but now bend your stretching knee, right? Bend that leg and now you're going to get the lower portion of your leg. So from here down is going to start stretching. So you feel that transfer. Again, hold that for 30 to 45 seconds and then repeat on the opposite side. It'll help in the long run, it'll alleviate discomfort after your run. All right, so another common area of tightness post-run is the side of your legs, your IT band and uh, even the hip area. So what we're going to do is go into an IT band stretch, which is your iliotibial band. It's, a, it's a basically a layer of fascia or a sheath that goes over top of the muscle, leads right into the front of the knee joint. When that gets tight, it can cause knee issues as well. So what we're doing here is we're going to stretch the right leg first, take your left leg, cross the front of your right leg, and then you're going to reach down to the inside of the right foot as you lead your right hip towards the right. So again, you're leading your hip in the opposite direction of your reach and hold nice long breaths. You're going to hold that for about 30 to 45 seconds. You're going to feel that stretch anywhere from the hip all the way down the side of that leg. When you're done that side, make sure you repeat that on the opposite side, right? Stretching the left leg now. And you might find one side's a little tighter than the other, which is usually the case. This is a great way to even that out. So if you ever finish a long run or you're just new to running and your hips get really tight, this is a great stretch to do post run. It's called the pigeon stretch. You're going to stretch through the side of your hips. So what you want to do is you want to get down on the ground with your hands. I'm going to stretch the left leg here. I'm going to lay it flat, almost in line with my waist, depending on your flexibility. And then what you want to do is you want to position your hips so they're really square, directly above, so they're level to the ground. And then you're going to move that back leg backwards and slowly lower your body weight downwards. Now if you're really flexible, you can probably get right to the ground. If that's even easy, what you can do from there is you can move your foot up higher and then control how much body weight you put down. You'll feel that stretch through the hip quite well. So you're going to go about 30 to 45 seconds and then repeat on the opposite side. You're going to find when you get up, your hips feel a lot looser. So I want to leave you with a final tip about breathing. Breathing is essential whether you're a novice or advanced. Now if you're new to running, there's a lot of talk about, you know, inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. Now the point is, I wouldn't get too focused on where you're breathing from, just get air in through your nose and mouth. The more oxygen you get in, the more efficient you're going to be. Not only that, the more you breathe in very long, deep breaths and stay away from shallow breathing, you're going to train your diaphragm and your respiratory muscles to be much more efficient. And in doing that, you're going to get more oxygen to your muscles.